uh, you know what around with Cintiq right now, and I can do it perhaps in the future with your own hands. Um, so these are the more modern techniques. Uh, simulation, which is a piece of software called Modulus Designer, and it uh, allows you to simulate fashion, sort of like uh, clothing fabric uh, simulated to uh, how it would react in real life. So you can actually look at this stuff without having to prototype every single uh, design iteration that you have, have in mind. And then uh, solid modeling and biometric modeling are sort of what SolidWorks does. So what's my approach to building this project? Um, <laughs> this slide, like, thank, thanks so much to Ellen to like, had everything about how to present this. Uh, and this is basically, I define my criteria, which is I have uh, virtual reality as a medium, and that gives me inherent advantages uh, in uh, that, that I get uh, towards CAD, which is telescopic vision. So you have both eyes in the space. You have uh, both your hands. You can move around, so you can look around what you're designing. And uh, you have a bunch of other stuff. And that's really important, because that's inherently something I get if I try to make this thing in VR, which right now only exists 100 times the screen. Proof of concept, I decided it was going to be an NFT space where you have some of the tools that I'm going to build. A lot more are going to come next room. And if you can see that, you'll get a good sense. So I started designing this space, and I realized that designing for VR isn't necessarily obvious. I was talking to Hegel about this. is like, it's not a thing yet. You know, like, we understand web a little bit, so we can actually think about that in Illustrator without having to go to web. But we need VR uh, to keep us in check without having to, without necessarily bringing up UX experiences that aren't going to translate well into the actual VR uh, environment. And so I started on building the framework first. And so I, I coded this term. I focused on basically coding up a working prototype without necessarily very good UX or, or the UI design. But once I have that working, I can design, I can build, I can design, I can build, and I can be a good feedback loop rather than designing a new design. Which to me, as a coder, uh, if I can do it, why, why won't I do it? So, uh, and then I prototype the labs, which is planning, writing algorithms, writing code, you know, I have this open cascade, the library I use for math mathematics, Unreal is a game, <coughs> rendering, and it's just like, what? Uh, and then the money I get it. And then uh, there's uh, debugging, compiling, uh, all that stuff. This is like what I look at most of the time, as opposed to what you might think, like the VR experience. That's like the most amount of time that I actually spend wasted, like it's like looking at the compile screen and then giving me an error. Uh, and then this is something funny, which is I actually built my own search tool for the documentation, uh, as a documentation for what I was using as a library, because their book was so, hard to read that I had to create my own book by scraping the website so I could I could be faster in development. And it's, like, it's reduced my time so like manifold because, because it would take me like 10 minutes to figure something out and I would be like two seconds. And that's really important uh, for speed because it's a much bigger project than one person can do. So my path ahead, I'll show you a demo in a moment, uh, but it's basically to make collaborative design spaces, to make quick mock-up tools rather than just design like SolidWorks, uh, hardcore. You have customizable workspaces and biometric modeling. So now I'm going to move to my demo, which hopefully this is not quite yet. That is okay. Uh, let's go to the demo. I'm going to talk through it. That's me in my room, looking out to fly. <laughs> right. So here I am, just sort of using the lab. Uh, and that's actually the day it was snowing, so it's pretty fun. Um, and I'm basically actually making a basket, because Ellen mentioned last time uh, she wanted a basket, and Phil was using it. She was like, my basket broke, make me a basket. So I was like, all right. Uh, so this is me uh, creating uh, one side of the basket and moving it around. And you can see uh, it's in physical space, so I am moving all around, I'm not using it. Uh, the same thing you would do in any free software like Rhino, but you get to do it in the space around you. So it's a little bit more natural to me right now. You do all rotate and then sort of move stuff. Okay, uh, and then now I'm making a handle, so I'm gonna cut out that shape because it's like it's right there, and then I push it in. Uh, I duplicate for the other side, and uh, the menu, by the way, is totally bullshit. Like it's just for me to show you. It's not how it's gonna be. I don't think that's very good UX. Uh, it's simply a placeholder for right now. And so now I have a thing. I'm putting a base. As you can see, I was all around it. Now I'm gonna make some books. I think. Uh, just like big books to put in the basket to like get an idea of what the scale of it is. Um, so it's something I can do just to play around and someone's putting them in there. <laughs> like, okay, that looks cool. And I'm going to take my controllers in there. Okay. Um, and I'm like, cool. So that was uh, one approach. This is solid modeling. This is a little bit more about like if you're if you want to just like think of a, a form idea and quickly sketch it out. 
mathematically. Uh, then uh, you sort of start uh, just building around lines in space. So it's, it's kind of this, one, this one's kind of like Google SketchUp or like Google uh, Tilt Brush, but in this case, you actually have Bezier lines that are mathematically defined, and you can actually export that into SolidWorks and Rhino once I build that component in. And this is the last demo, which is uh, me using polygonal modeling. So this is the more traditional uh, visual effects industry approach where you simply are creating poly triangles all around you and you can just, you have no bounds on what you're creating. So this is me creating a weird looking mask type thing. It looks like Darth Vader at one point, but then it's like a chimpanzee at another point. So. <laughs> um, well, you can see like, some eye stuff right there. Uh, and so I'm simply just drawing and and you can see, I, I realized after, which is what I pointed out earlier as well, which you really see me just moving all around, like I'm completely lost in the experience. And so I have like a big living room, like, and nothing's in there because I don't want to pop into stuff. And so, yeah, simply you just, you, you get lost in the experience and you draw and you draw. And you're not thinking about uh, actually rotating the model or whatever you do. And this is it. So, yeah.